so by popular demand, a lot of you guys have been asking for how to set up the EMAG internally in our last video. So I wanna make sure I answer your questions because I do appreciate all your comments down on that last video. So thank you very much for the support. Let's dive right into it. The way to program this gun is actually pretty easy. First, remove the stock. Second, make sure that you have a battery connected, which you could hear there's a battery connected. And then there's this little display in here. When you remove it, it's always in the buffer tube, by the way. When you remove it, just be careful not to break these wires. It would be very annoying to have to switch them out. So all you gotta do is pull this out and then press this little button and off you go. So let's look at what the settings are in the most utmost details that make sense for this format. And here we are with our quick look at the programming unit, PU, made by Spark Labs. And let's dive right into the settings here, starting with the nozzle dwell, which is the time that your nozzle is open. It's the full cycle, in this case set to 12 milliseconds. And the only time that you'll ever need to change this by pressing up or down is in case you have feeding issues. So let's say you have a very heavy BB that you're using and you want to achieve a feed rate and you're currently having misfeeds, then bring this all the way up. Obviously you don't need to go as high as this. Um, until you start to have your rifle feeding. So in case you have certain magazines, certain BB weights, you will have feeding issues inevitably, and this is how to solve them. Simply go up a little bit. In case you want to optimize your gun and you want to have the fastest gun possible, you want to have this set to a very low amount. So I suggest that you start with a low value and just work yourself up until the gun starts to feed properly. Obviously, do test it in semi-auto and full auto to make sure that you have proper feeding in both modes. And that is how to set nozzle dwell. Very straightforward. The next setting in line is our valve dwell. You will see that you can start this with one millisecond and simply connect your regulator. And what I like to do is set the regulator as high as possible so that you get a very good impulse. And having this set to a high number uh, having your regulator set to a high number means that you can go as low as possible here. Usually you will have issues with the consistency of your shots when you go too low. So what I suggest you do is set your gun to 150 PSI or above 100 is a good starting point and then simply walk yourself up until you see the FPS of your rifle to be very consistent. So within like one or two FPS is what you're trying to get it and once you're there you're good to go all you have to do at this point is change the psi on your regulator so you can use this value to fine tune it but you will want to use the psi the pressure of your gun to dictate how much power you put into it and again try to have as much impulse as possible to get the most out of it the next setting is our bb dwell this is basically the time between shots it's the time that the BB is supposed to take to leave the barrel. By default, it's set to five milliseconds and you can leave it at five milliseconds. However, if you want to optimize your gun, again, you want to keep this as low as possible. So you can experiment with this depending on how long your barrel is and how much PSI you have input pressure. You can set this to a lower or higher number. Generally speaking, keep it as low as possible because it's basically a delay between shots. So. Usually five milliseconds is more than enough and you will never really realize that you have a, a gain or a loss in terms of performance. So I would just leave it at this. Now, something that most of you are probably interested in, the rate of fire. So right now with the settings that we have set up with the nozzle dwell, the BB dwell and the valve dwell set to the numbers we have, the maximum we can get is 31 RPS. If your field only allows 25 RPS, for example, or 20 or whatever, just set it to that exact number and you will be within field limits. So in case you want to get this to the maximum possible number, you will first have to set the other values that we just talked about and keep them as low as possible because the lower they are, the higher your rate of fire will be. So if you're wondering why you can only go to 30, 25, whatever, uh, you'll probably have to set the other values lower. Just keep in mind that if you have your loading rate or your nozzle dwell at a low number, maybe you will not be able to feed the speed that you're trying to be at. So you'll probably need different magazines, different BB weights, 
you can already tell there's a lot to optimize here. The next thing that you can set is the burst value. I'll show you how to set burst in the next step, but right now, this basically lets you choose how many rounds are going to be bursted. It starts with two, goes all the way to 10. So in case you wanna have a 10 round burst, here you go. You can set this to five, six, whatever, anything in between. Now, in order to use burst mode to begin with, you have to set your fire modes. All of the guns are set with the first position to be safe. And that is the most, you know, <laughs> safe way to use a firearm. If you now want to change any of these values, you don't have to click anything on the screen, but you will have to switch your gun to the next fire mode. So you can see right now, I've set my gun to the next fire mode. And now that is set to semi. If I now want to change the fire mode of this, and let's say I want to go to burst, all I have to do is click up until I have burst. Now I will be able to use the gun in the burst mode and whatever burst setting I set in the prior setting is what I'm going to have. We have a shot counter here, which in this case, the gun is brand new. It hasn't even been tested yet. So it's just sitting at three shots right now. And that brings us back to nozzle dwell. So let's quickly jump through these settings and go to the fire modes again. So let's say that right now we have full auto here, but let's say for some reason your field doesn't allow full auto, something really cool that I can recommend is that you set it to binary, which basically is semi-auto, but whenever you release the trigger, you're also shooting another shot. So that's something cool to look out for, and I think it's something that not every engine has. So I know a lot of you guys like this setting, so make sure you try this out. It's a lot of fun to use. All right, so again, we're coming back to the beginning here, and you're probably wondering, well, where do I set, for example, the sensitivity of my trigger, or whether it's open bolt or closed bolt? All you gotta do is hold this button, and you'll see something that I'm gonna show you first, which is way cooler than just setting uh, those other settings that I just mentioned. And that is select gun. Right now, we have been programming under the select gun one, and we can change this to gun two, and if I keep holding this, we will again be greeted with the screen that we just went through and we'll have different values to choose from. So consider this like a preset. Once you set your values for gun one, you can set them for gun two and maybe tune them, for example, to be more like a DMR setting, which in that case, probably you're gonna bring this value way up so you get more volume of air. And obviously the PSI on your regulator will also have to go up to above 150 or 200 so you can get two joules or three joules. So that is something to keep in mind if you wanna have a very powerful gun. Again, by holding this button, I'm going back to the secret menu here. And if I now go through these, we recommend you use a LiPo battery, but you can technically have a different battery type chosen. Keep this set to LiPo if you're using our supply at LiPos and you'll be good to go. Here are a couple metrics for the battery performance at this point. So you see the voltage and the battery charge level that is estimated based on the voltage. So that's something to keep in mind if you're interested in whether your battery is good or not. It's a quick way to check. Now, this is something that I think is really cool. It shows us the current position of the trigger and the position from where it will actually start shooting. So if you're looking at the screen, you can see this little triangle showing us the exact position of the trigger. If I now want this trigger to be released sooner, I can just bring this down a little bit. And then you will realize right now, the, the standard position for this trigger has been set a little bit with a little bit less treble. So you can see it's already preloaded. Now the gun doesn't fire because it doesn't reset properly. So to make sure that your gun is always firing, make sure that there's plenty of space between your selected trigger threshold and your idle position of the trigger so that the reset can be registered. Obviously, you can fine tune this. If you have a tunable trigger, you can change the tuning on the trigger and then adjust this here. This is showing you the current selector position. This is basically just for troubleshooting. So in case you ever have any trouble with your selector, our customer service might ask you to send you a picture of this. And you know it will just be a good way to tell whether there's something off with the setting of this of, of the fire selector. So most of the values that are coming from after this are mostly for uh, debugging. But this is something you might be interested in. Most of you guys are probably familiar with open bolt and closed bolt. And just a quick recap, 
Open bolt simply means that between each shot, the bolt will remain open. So basically the nozzle is in the rearward position, allowing BBs to go up. However, this technically gives you a short delay in the time that the nozzle takes to close the bolt and then fire the shot. So if you wanna have a very fast gun, you'd probably wanna set this to close bolt and this is the snappiest way to operate it. And the following values are only set by our technicians and you should probably never change them. And they're also mostly used for debugging. So let's skip those and show you something that you might be interested in besides those debugging values here. And that is the, de the recalibration. In case you ever run into an issue with your trigger and your sensitivity and your uh, fire selector, holding up will let you recalibrate the system. So you can hear it's restarting and you're seeing what this has been set to, what firmware you have on here, and you go through the calibration process as guided by the system. So it's asking you how many fire selected positions you have and the EMAC has three. So we can simply go and start the calibration process here. So right now, it's asking me to put the gun into the fire selected position that's corresponding to safe. So that is the first position. Simply set it to that and then hold up and it'll give you a value and it's set. It's asking you to put it into position one, which is the semi-auto position usually. Press up, another value, and you can see the values are going up. So that's a good indication that everything's working. You should always have higher values as you go through them. And here we go, 3000. Now it's asking us to pull the trigger and that's how it's determining the actual position of the trigger. So just pull it a couple times and it's telling you that you can press up when you're done and it will basically have taken a measurement of the default position, the idle position and the fully pulled position. And the calibration is done. So now you're back to a fully reset gun. So whatever kind of settings you had here has been reset. So only do this if you have an issue, don't do it for fun because you're basically losing all of your settings. And you know, that's pretty much everything you need to know about how to set up your EMAC by using the Spark Labs programming unit. Oh, and obviously in case you haven't subscribed yet and you don't remember from last video, I am trying to build the best airsoft gun in the world. So in case this is something that interests you, I would highly appreciate if you give me a follow, leave a thumbs up on this little video right here because it does help me tremendously to reach new people and support the project of making the best airsoft gun in the world. So thank you very much for subscribing in case you have subscribed and obviously turn on the bell because I'll be trying to post more in the future. And I appreciate you guys supporting me in those videos. So thank you very much for your love and see you guys in the next video, I guess.